Mmm, amber. Only a few of us remember how nice and soothing a monochrome amber monitor looked like. Today, we are looking at the 10D TTL5. Wait, that wasn't that easy. You see, this is an MDA TTL monochrome monitor. That means it only takes a digital intensity video signal of about 5 volts. But I don't have an MDA graphic adapter. The closest thing I have is this. It appears to be a VGA and CGA combo adapter. This monitor is from a time before multi-sync. So not only the horizontal and vertical sync frequencies are different, but the video signals are also RGB, outputting an analog signal peaking at only 1 volt instead of 5. This means I'll have to mod this monitor. I know it's quite a dirty mod that could, depending on your monitor, end up in frying your flyback or worst, so do it at your own risk. I just want to explain my steps. This is an experiment and it's all about fun. So let's get started. With absolutely no diagram or documentation online for the graphic adapter nor the monitor, I had to guess. First, let's tweak the range of the internal sync frequency generator. On the horizontal range, the V-hole potentiometer only gives us between 30 to 45 Hz, meaning it was out of spec even to lock on the original 50 Hz MDA frequency. To tweak the vertical range, I've simply added a 68K resistor to ground on the V-hole potentiometer, expanding the range to 30 Hz to almost 70 Hz, allowing to lock on the 60 Hz CGA signal. On the vertical range, the original 15.87 to 20 kHz range was within specs to lock on the 18.43 kHz MDA signal, but a little bit too high to lock on the 15.75 kHz from the CGA card. So this time, I had to add a 150 ohm resistor in series to the vertical hole potentiometer, giving me a range from 15.27 to 19 kHz. Now, the screen could lock on the CGA frequencies, but I was left with the issue that the digital circuit would treat my analog signal as a digital signal and give me a black and white result. No grayscale, or amber scale in this case. Adding a switch to choose between RGB and intensity helped a bit, but I was left with some dot crawl artifacts. So the next step was to bypass the exclusive OR gate. By simply cutting the track and injecting the mixed RGB signal on the rest of the CRT screen driver circuit, we now have grayscale. But 1 volt is not enough to provide an optimal brightness level. Remember, the screen is designed to run on TTL voltage levels of about 5 volts. Now, if we want to make a better use of our mixed RGB signals, we need to amplify the 1 volt peak to peak signal to some TTL level of about 5 volts peak to peak. It will involve the use of an op amp. I have started with a simple circuit like this one, but the part I chose was not enough, with its 1 MHz bandwidth. Good for audio, but far too limited for a video signal. With a resolution of 640x480 at 60Hz, we need at least 18.43 MHz bandwidth. The only part I found in my stash is this surface mount video op amp. I made this very simple but effective circuit below. The decoupling capacitor is required to filter the noise. The 1K input attenuation potentiometer drives the overall brightness. The second 1.8 kilo potentiometer changes the feedback value and acts almost like a gamma adjustment. Now the module can be secured inside the chassis and we have a monitor that can handle both MDA and CGA signals. As you can see, I still have to work on the image position. Let me know in the comment section if you're interested in seeing how I'm achieving that. I hope you liked it and learned something, and as usual, thanks for watching.